stay tuned after the feature for a very special message. And now, our feature presentation. There was justice in his six gun. There was magic in his name. I always tried to be him When we played our cowboy games I stood in line to see him Right across our small town screen And in my mind's eye I rode with him in every scene With that friendly western smile Right up in the sunset No goodbyes Just so long for a while Thank you. 
from uh, Warren, Ohio. Uh, what, what's your name? Ramona and Keith Hearn. Uh, Warren, Ohio. <laughs> we just attended the Roy Rogers Festival of Portsmouth, Ohio last night. We saw Roy Rogers there. The first time he's been at his festival. Is that right? That's right. Wow. How is he? Uh, he's still in good, good health? Yeah. Is Dale there too? She's, she's there, but we didn't see her. They are, they're there for a reunion, a family reunion, so he just was uh, in and out real quick. Whatever you want to write on it, buddy. He uh, carved this out of leather, leather from Keith. Bob Brown did it? Bob Brown. He's the one who loves up a big bear. He's down, yes, he's down in Portsmouth with his wife. Of course, he did this through the winter for Keith. We have Channel 13 here today, too.
Harry have my father's check for the water right? Good. Now, this fellow's only got the rest of you. There's the contract Harry gave my father, but the name's been changed to Crane. He killed my father and blamed it on to Harry, so he could get rid of them both and have the water right. I, I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. It was... Uh... It don't matter who fired the shot. You're all in. I'll up to your neck. Well, I guess I must be guilty, but I can't remember a thing about it.
in fighting crime, especially with his Crime Stopper show, which has been on television here for at least 10 years, and brought many criminals to justice, and uh, has paid out uh, many uh, dollars in reward. May I introduce to you our man of the year, Warren Durant. Don, let me thank you very much indeed for this, this great honor and uh, I think a suitable greeting from me on this particular evening is Howdy Partners. <laughs> uh, Don has mentioned this, this Crime Stoppers program which those of you who come from other parts of the country may be familiar with. It's now in 700 communities all over the United States, Canada, all of the British Isles, and very shortly will be in Australia. I'll give you an idea because we get these questions everywhere we go, people stopping in the supermarket and saying, hey, that's a great program, how is it going? And I give them this little report card, which I will give you tonight because the figures change daily. In the time that we have had Crime Stoppers operating in Rochester, 700 unsolved crimes have been cleared from the books. hundred arrests, including 25 for murder. The latest one just last week. Do you remember the case, the newspapers and their uh, endless pursuit of their own interests rather than the public's let this little fact out that it was a tip to the Crime Stoppers hotline that brought about the arrest of the suspect in the case of the woman who was killed while holding the baby in her lap. Do you remember that case here a short time ago? Well, in any event, uh, it, it truly is an extraordinary program. Uh, $70,000 in reward money has been paid out. And the conviction rate, all those arrested on Crime Stoppers information, is 96%. So when they get you with that information, you've really been had. But I think all of you here tonight will agree that there was a day when justice was more simple, and maybe, maybe it was even better. You know, in those days when the only law west of the Pegasus was, show, show them what it was. There it is, right there. That was the only law west of the Pegasus. I don't know. We, we sometimes think about, uh, how things have changed. We look around in this country today and realize what's happening in our cities. Just imagine the capital of the United States, which for all practical purposes is the capital of the free world, Washington, D.C., the murder capital of America. That's a disgraceful situation that is really beyond words. And then we have, you know, we of course have had the mafia around a long, long time. Have you heard now there is this new Japanese mafia? Have you heard about this? I, the other day I was talking with uh, one of the agents of the FBI in the Rochester office, and I said, would you tell me something? What, what is the difference between the old mafia, the one that has its roots in Sicily, and the Japanese mafia? And he said, well, not much. But when the Japanese Mafia take you for a ride, you get better mileage. <laughs> now I had to come all the way from California to get that one. Well, 
going back to that business of simple justice, and I'll just mention this one other thing because this happens to be a, a case that we're going to be dramatizing on the crime of the week very short, and then we'll all get out to the, the buffet table here. Let me, let me send you on your way to the fiddles with this story because this is one I want you to pay attention to. When it comes up on the air, you will remember that you heard it here first. This is out in Mendon, of you folks from California and all these other places to the northeast, west, and south. You should know that Mendon is a rural area, uh, not too far from the city of Rochester, and out in Mendon, you will still see people, check me if I'm mistaken here, folks, you'll still see people driving themselves around in horse-drawn vehicles. Now, the other day, this is also a very wealthy suburb. The other day, this fellow, man around 80 years old, he remembers the good old days when you could take your time. He's out there riding along on one of those little dirt roads, and up behind him comes this rich son of a gun from the city with his Maserati. And he's, of course, trying to get around him, but the road is too narrow. He can't swerve around. He's not going to take that Maserati up a hill. So he lays on the horn. Well, this fellow's a little bit on the deaf side. He doesn't hear this right away. Finally, the guy pulls up right behind him and lays on the horn. And with that, the man stops. He looks out. This guy is now in a state of apoplexy. He is so angry, he doesn't know what to do. So he gets out. And the first thing that the, the little old guy sees is that the man has got a pistol. So he comes up and he throws out a few words that you know uh, can't dangle here in front of all these, these people tonight, but some well-chosen four-letter words, curses him out to the skies and says, now get down from that buckboard, man, I'm gonna show you something. Says, I wanna ask you a question, have you, you old geezer, you ever danced? And uh, he says, well, I, not for a long time. He says, well, you're going to dance right now. And he empties this revolver at the guy's feet. And of course, the man is hopping around trying to avoid these bullets. Sweat's pouring off his face. He figures he's a goner. So when he finishes with the, with the load, he said, uh, now that'll teach you a lesson. Pull that thing out of the way. I'm going to get around. So he gets up in the buckboard. Well, this fellow gets back into his car. And the city slicker in the Maserati doesn't see that he's taken from his little wagon a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> he comes over and uh, taps on the window of the car and says, put that window down there, Sonny. Which, of course, the driver promptly does. Both barrels of the gun are now within inches of this guy's face and his eyes are starting to bulge. The old man says, now I want to ask you something. You ever kissed the back end of a horse? <laughs> the driver says, looking square into the gun, no, but I've always wanted to. <laughs> well, I've always wanted to have dinner with you, and this is the time. We'll see you.
Next to Elaine Riley is uh, Jean Doremus, and you've already heard from Juan uh, Doremus. Stuart Whitman. Dan Davies. Lena Mesquet. Dick Jones. Ted Reinhardt. Uh, and of course, Mario DiMarco was supposed to be up here, but there was no room. But Mario DiMarco. Okay, well, I think to liven things up a bit, we'll have uh, Ted and Ruth uh, do a, a couple of numbers for us now so we can get in the mood a little bit. Right now, Ruthie isn't here right now. As some of you may have seen, um, we have a drug uh, poster here, which is in conjunction with uh, a radio station in Brackport, New York, and which is uh, Say No to Drugs, Alcohol, and Pornographic Material. Uh, our uh, club, the Buck Jones Rangers of America, uh, supports that, and we've been uh, working at that for the last three years. Next year, hopefully, we will have a parade in which the theme will still be saying over drugs, and uh, we hope that uh, you find people here will be back here again and uh, watch the parade and maybe be in it. Uh, now, we wish to uh, present our first uh, award to uh, Richard Martin. Because of the limited space here, they're in the back, I have to pull it out, so just bear with me for one second. The character that well, he really introduced in uh, the movie Bombardier, and then uh, RKO uh, Radio Pictures picked up and put it in a uh, Western series with Tim Hope, and uh, Richard Martin uh, became uh, Gino Rafferty in Westerns. So to uh, a person who really deserves this award, I, I think, here is Richard Martin. It's been a long time since I talked like this for my friends. Well, I want to talk to you for a minute. Uh, in California years ago, there was only a couple of us there for radio. Crispin Martin and myself. And Crispin taught me how to talk like this. <laughs> but now we got millions of people in California. They all talk like this. <laughs> in fact, we're trying to get some of them to New York. <laughs> and they're wonderful uh, cousins of mine, and they need the work. So if they send them and they talk like this, give them a job, will you please? <laughs> but I want to say one thing. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, Real long time. I, I'm going to let my hair grow back to its natural color. <laughs> We're dying it like this, but I want to tell you, uh, I never had so much fun coming up here. My wife and I, uh, we had a lot of fun coming up here, and we only say one thing. I don't understand these Italian people too much. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, everybody should be talking like this. <laughs> thing, you know, I'm eating the food, and here I am. Uh, it's, it's been really wonderful, and I want to thank you all very much. I really have enjoyed it. And without you people, you know, you bring back a lot of fond memories, and uh, you make me dig out the old movies and think, well, I ought to try for a third career. <laughs> but uh, right now, I don't even buy green bananas, so I don't, <laughs> I don't want to take that chance. <laughs> but thank you very much, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, now 
uh, lovely lady here on my uh, right, who played opposite Buck Jones in Hello Trouble, Lena Desquet. Please accept this on behalf of the Buck Jones Rangers. Of Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sort of the uh, the grandfather of all these uh, handsome leading men and these beautiful leading ladies. I go back so far. Uh, See, I, I just had my 82nd birthday. But I can tell you, I, I do buy green bananas. <laughs> but uh, I do want to thank you for inviting me up here. Uh, Richard mentioned about all the Italian people here. Well, I've got a lot of nationalities in me, but Italian I usually got by injection. celebrities. Uh, I've been I went to the dogs about 40 years ago. <laughs> and the best thing that ever happened to me. I uh, am now what they call a dog show judge. I have my license by the American Kennel Club. That's like uh, getting a contract with old Louis Mayer at MGM. <laughs> Only it's a lot cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, Dick Jones. As you know, Dick Jones uh, not only appeared in the, with Jack Mahoney in the Range Rider series, he also had a program of, of his own, uh, Dick West. But maybe most of us kids will remember the voice of Pinocchio, Dick Jones. somewhere. Uh, again, I, I'm really honored and I don't have anything uh, you know, startling and uh, cunning to say. Uh, I have a lot of uh, nationalities in me also. I'm, I'm Scotch, Irish, bourbon, gin, <laughs> and uh, people call me a cowboy, but I don't think I am because my mother is a cow. <laughs> and uh, I, I I have one thing to say that I am, am grateful, and I praise the Lord that I had the opportunity of working with Buck Jones, and uh, 
at the tender age of seven or eight or nine, whatever I was at that time, the first time I worked there, I got to know him and his family, and he was just one hell of a swell guy. And uh, I, too, am a Buck Jones fan. In fact, I named my first son uh, Buck. But then he got older, and uh, the kids at school started teasing him about Buck, and they changed it around a little bit, but he didn't want to be Buck anymore. <laughs> but uh, I have some fond memories of uh, working with people like that, and I thank you so very much for inviting me here. And uh, I don't want to take up your time and let you get on with the show. Mm -hmm. Tom? to present uh, our award to Elaine Riley. Uh, I'm just glad to get the opportunity that the fact that Lena said she was the grandmother of the group, I want you to know I'm the youngest one of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's been fun to be here, and I've seen quite a few people that I met in uh, Charlotte's last two years ago. And uh, I haven't seen Dick Jones in 34 years, is it? 38. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've had a good time, and Marie and Dawn put on an Italian dinner for us. I walked in, but I think they're going to roll me home. I have never eaten such great food. Where did Marie? She's out of the hall. We don't have to show that I gave her some publicity. Thank you very much. Okay, now we'd like to present an award to Stuart Whitman. Thank you, Dominic, for bringing me in. Um, I never worked with Buck Jones. I worked with Roy Rogers, Cisco Kid. I was a heavy. You will notice me in the background and the, with the uh, with posse, part of the posse. I was always part of the posse. I was running with a beer. And later on, I did some other things. It's kind of interesting to see all these lovely pictures that different people here to bring it to me for me to sign. Some I haven't seen before. And isn't that the way it goes, you know? And they say, well, will you take a picture with me and I'll send you a copy? And of course, you never get a copy. <laughs> you never get to see any of the copies. Well, I want to thank you for this award. Nice to be here in this lovely company with everybody. Uh, a lot of things I can talk about, but I'll just wait and save it for later. <laughs> All right, good night. I would also like to uh, mention that Stuart is uh, seen on Saturday night, not all the time, on a show called Superboy. He plays Pat Kent. Yeah. Okay, now, we have our Man of the Year Award. here because he's never been in Western uh, motion pictures. Usually our awards are uh, Western motivated, but this award will best suit his uh, type of work. So to Warren Doremus, please accept this achievement award. say thank you. I have already told you the two jokes that I can remember. And at this moment, um, it is more of a, of a serious time in my life than uh, one with humor. So I can simply say to Don and to all of you that this means a very great deal to me. And what's every bit as important is being here with all of you tonight. You know, uh, when Dom was on the air with me the other day, we started talking about the history of this Buck Jones Film Festival and uh, awards dinner. And I wound up the interview by saying to the audience, 
as I say to you tonight, but then I say to you what you already know. The man to really be honored here tonight is the fellow whose unbridled passion for the days of the Old West and the recreation of those days, with a lot of imagination thrown in, of course, brought to life on the screen of gathering together people who appreciate what was done in a time when life was simpler, when movies were simpler, when the message was rather straightforward and you didn't need a psychiatrist's couch to figure out what the story was supposed to be about. In the days when the heroes and the bad guys were easily identified, when things somehow or another seem to make more sense than they do frequently today. That man is behind me now, the fellow handing out all these awards. We, of course, do not have one for him tonight, but I know that all of you will join me in saluting Dominic Marafiati and his wife for all the work they've done. many more years of this get-together here in Rochester. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Our final award uh, goes to Ted and Ruth Reinhardt. so much and uh, it's such a pleasure to be back here in Rochester. We hated to miss last year but when the uh, schedule was changed somewhat the, in October we had a big concert in Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm not going to do too much talking because our music will speak for ourselves and I guess we're going to be heading up that way in just a minute. Is that right Dominic? But it's good to see you all again and particularly some of the old friends that we made at these various festivals all over the United States. Haven't seen Dick Jones and uh, Dick Martin for, I guess, about uh, eight, seven years, something like that. We see Sunset all the time, Peggy all the time. It's always fun to see them. So anyway, I I'll say nothing else. Ruthie, are you going to say anything? You're not, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll be doing some singing out in just a minute. Thank you so much. Just a pleasure. We have a present presentation here from uh, Tony Trinchini. Mm. Oh. Now this vest that that's presented here and the one Marie is wearing has a special significance, which I will read to you. It's a brief uh, note. Dominic and Marie, please accept these friendship tests from the Trincini family. The white sequins were chosen to represent each of your friends along the way. The silver letters represent the dedication and loyalty for this year's festival. The silver boots represent what a beautiful pair you two make. Blank is for all those you have dedicated your festivals throughout the years. The white initials are love from Tony and Carol. <laughs> there is one award here, but I guess I must have walked away here. Uh, just give me one minute and we'll be on a road with Ted and, Ted and Ruth. Yes. 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 Yes.
Ladies and gentlemen, once in a time like this, <laughs> I got a chance I, I'm a real hammer. Uh, rather than jump up, I don't want this place to go quiet. I'm going to tell you a joke about a couple of buddies of mine who was up in Fresno, California. And they're driving along the railroad track, and uh, everything's wonderful, and they're having a good time. And all of a sudden, the train coming along, and one of them didn't get out of the way. The other one stepped aside, and the train, boom, he's gone. So the other fellow looked around for Pedro, and he's not there. So he's walking around the railroad track, and he picked up an arm, and he's like, hell, that looks just like Pedro's arm. He said, I can remember the fingernails are full of dirt. And he says, and the ring on it says, P for Pedro. So he walked along a little further, and he picked up a leg, and by God, it's the same foot with the sandal on it, and he put in the knee of the pants. He said, by God, that looks like Pedro's leg. Went along a little further, and he picked up the torso with the belt, and it says, P for Pedro on the belt. He said, by God, that's, I think this is. Down the track about 200 yards, he picked up a head, and he hold it by the head, and by God, it's Pedro. He said, Hey, Pedro, nobody here, why don't you put yourself together? <laughs> <laughs> This award here, it's for a, a special uh, uh, front row kid here. He's written an essay in school and won second place. And to uh, instill the uh, uh, the values of, uh, of what he uh, wrote, I want to show him that everyone appreciates what he wrote it's uh, for Joseph Trincini. of your outstanding capabilities. Oh. Take it away, Ted. Okay, and if folks may wish to Monday, Ruth and I will observe our 34th, 34th wedding anniversary. So don't worry. You're giving me a present an for our 34th anniversary. Yes, our 34th anniversary. What are you going to give me? A divorce. <laughs> I want to break my jacket of brown and gold tin can while the moon goes climbing high. I want to hear the sound of the whippoorwill. I want to hear a coyote cry. The saddle horse between my legs, riding him out on the range. Just to kick him in the side, make him show his step and pride. Back on the Texas plains, each night he might win somehow. It seems I'm back where I belong. Just a country hit way back in the sticks, back where I was born. Those city lights and city ways I cry me insane I want to be a dome, I want to be back home Back on the Texas plains I want to drink my jacket from a golden can While the moon goes climbing high I want to hear the sound of the whippoorwill I want to hear a coyote cry the horse between my legs To ride him out on the range Just to kick him in the side Make him sure step and pride Back on the Texas 
my lips. <laughs> no new taxes. No, just that. We are, this, this has been a policy of ours ever since we started entertaining as a team 33 years ago. Never do we inject any type of political ideology within our show. Now, you certainly was very obvious. Would you use the, the terminology that I'm used to? What do you mean? We don't talk politics when we're entertaining. Oh, I see. We have people out there of all convictions. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, honey. Well, you should not have even inferred. I'm sorry. All right. Just don't I mean, we've been married 34 years yes. Monday. I'm trying to forget it. And I have no idea what your political affiliation is. I mean, I really don't care. Well, I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. All right. I mean, I, I don't care. <laughs> what are you? What are I what? Are you a Democrat or a Republican? <laughs> you said you didn't care. Well, I do. I think I need to know after 34 years living with you. Ruthie? What? I'm a kinder, gentler person. <laughs> Obviously, you folks didn't watch the campaign, did you? <laughs> that usually goes over very well. I love you, this is a Democratic stronghold. <laughs> what, what does that mean? That means that I was a Bush man. I'm a Republican. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm a Democrat. Well, that's perfectly all right. Why are you a Republican? It's been a family tradition. My father was a Republican. <laughs> you mean to tell me just because your dad was a Republican, you are? That's correct. That's silly. No, I think it makes sense. Well, then I suppose if your dad were a horse thief, you'd be a horse thief too, right? No, then I'd be a Democrat. <laughs> so it so happens you have the words of the song. You're cheating. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the words of this song. Okay, all right. All right. We'll pretend. Who sang with Glenn Miller besides Tex Bennett? Helen O'Connell. No, she Here didn't I sing. With, who sang? Who was the female vocalist with Glenn Miller? Or did he have a female vocalist? Very pretend. Hutton. Who? Marian Hutton. Fran Hutton. Marian Hutton. Oh, Marian Hutton. Okay, Marian, it's yours. Thank you. Thank 
can't you hear them all, honey? It's the cowboys to the me. If you've got lots of leisure time and nothing else to do And wanna be happy as me Just grab your hat and get your boots on pretty soon You belong out to the Cowboys Jubilee Just hear the Cowboy Band of Blading Who's gon' be the thing if you get in the swing? Say the cowboy's life is for me. So now your cares, you'll be shedding them like me. You'll be head to the cowboy's jubilee. Just hear the cowboy band of playing. Even if you're not really a fan of other types of music, strictly country, western, or western, uh, you've all heard the name Cole Porter. It's hard to conceive of the fact that Mr. Porter actually uh, composed a song, cowboy style, which we're going to do for you right now. Well, just a minute. Wasn't, uh, wasn't this in some kind of a movie or play that, that Jane Russell also was involved? No. Wasn't it? One, no. Oh, shucks. I wanted to play the part of Gene Russell. <laughs> no way, honey. You'll never qualify. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I can never. I can never. How about Dolly Parton? Oh, yeah. Slim to go Dolly Parton. Get up. Get up. Oh, give me a land. Lots of land on the starry stars of life. Don't let's see it. Wander over yonder till I see the mountains rise. La, 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 la. I want to drive to the ridge where the west commences. The gaze at the moon until I lose my senses. I can't look at hollows. And I can't stand fences. It's a Don't fence me in. Just turn me loose. Let me swaddle my old swaddle underneath the western skies. On my eyes, let me wander over yonder. Till I see the mountains rise. La, 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 la. I want to ride to the bridge where the west commences. The days at the moon until I lose my senses. I can't look at hollows. And I can't stand fences. Don't fence me at all. apply to all of us, the, the power of thinking positively. And there was this father that had two sons that decided he was going to see how positive they were. So he took them into the stable and there was a high pile of manure, you know, where the horses were. So the first son looked at it and he went, oh, yuck, and he went out and he left. The second son looked at it and he went, oh. So he started shoveling and he was shoveling and, and all morning long the father came back and the boy was still shoveling and he was singing and he was so happy. And the father said, son, why are you so happy shoveling that manure? He said, dad, I know under all this manure there has to be a horse. <laughs> Here's our closing song. A very, a very familiar melody. I understand down Ohio way they, they had a, a convention. And uh, I think maybe we should give them recognition by doing their song. And I think if you'd all stand, you've been tired of sitting for a long time. It's heavy trails. Everybody has to go to the top. Now, are you going to stand in the the 
the clouds when we're together. Just sing a song and bring that sunny weather. I'll be friends to you. Just sing a song and bring that sunny weather. Happy trails to you. Till we meet again. Happy trails. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Donald, thank you too for making our days here so wonderful. Thank you so much. How did you like the program? Very good. I thought it was good. Very nice. Is this your first one? Pardon? Is this your first one? I, was, I came to the first one. Pardon? I've, been, I've come to the first one, but then I haven't. My husband called me. He's a fellow that and my son run the movie. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, uh, I didn't come a couple of years, but... Uh, you know, we've attended to uh -huh. Always enjoyed it. This is only my second year. For oh, me. really? You came last year? Yes. Yeah, I took the pictures for Dominic last year, too. Oh, that's great. Smile, Dominic. Hey, Dawn, Peggy. You're cheating. Yes, you are. Six gun. There was magic in his name, and I always tried to be him when we played our cowboy games. I stood in line to see him right across our small town screen. In my mind's eye, I rode with him in every scene. And he would ride off in the sunset with that friendly western smile. Ride off in the sunset, no goodbye. Just so long for a while
Out Westerns live at the Ramada Inn on Shiloh Avenue. The 7th Annual Buck Jones Film Festival brought out the Western stars. Donna Lacey has our report. This was for serious Western fans only. Boots, posters, and cowboy hats required. Everywhere you glanced, the look was Western, and if you looked, you might have noticed some Western stars. This cowboy starred in over 60 Western films with a classic Western name to boot. At age 63, Sunset Carson is still making Westerns. Well, I love making Westerns as I was born and raised in a cattle ranch in Plainview, Texas. That kind of sparked Hollywood's eye, and they wanted to see if they could make a cowboy story out of a cowboy. Now Peggy Stewart often starred opposite Carson. Women were a Western necessity. They had to save somebody, you know. Oh, and we had the horse to kiss at the end. <laughs> Larry Stoltz is a true Western fan. He's seen all 2,000 movies in his Western collection. Now, I can't tell you the story content on them because they run together, but the quality and all like that I remember, but as far as story content, no. <laughs> yes, the stars and the fans keep Westerns alive. And nowadays, so does cable TV. Turner has just bought all the, our Westerns. Or we made, uh, Tim and I, I think we made around 35, 38 pictures. And they're now coming on cable television. It's a new generation. They've never seen Westerns before. So we may start a whole new thing. Until then, this former Western star will stick with his new career, insurance. Westerns may never die, but sometimes its stars move on to greener pastures. Donna Lacey, New Center 13.